Hi guys, this is um, part 20 of the Mughal campaign. I want to first of all start off this part with an overview of all the balance of power of the whole world. First, let's look at Europe. This is the Russians here. As you can see, their territory hasn't really changed from what they did start off with um, initially. Um, they probably just took this region from um, the Swedes. They didn't have that right at the beginning, so they've taken that. That's the Polish. They've taken East Prussia from the Prussians. So it looks like they're at war. Um, the Prussians, they're actually, um, it's quite surprising that they haven't expanded that much. That's their territory right there. Um, Sweden's taken over. They've, they've actually expanded this way and taken over um, Denmark. This was Denmark's territory before. As you can see, Spain. They haven't expanded much in Europe themselves. Bavarian states. I think Britain should be attacking them soon as well um, because one of their victory conditions is to take Egypt so usually they start off around here and then work their way towards the Ottoman Empire um, the Ottomans hasn't changed much either that's France right there so let's look at um, the Americans That's the 13 colonies. I've actually got um, a trade agreement with them, I think. New Spain. Uh, I've never invaded this area. I don't know if you guys know better, but um, this looks like a pretty rich region. So, my initial, after I actually establish myself in um, India, I might actually decide to come here, land somewhere here, and work my way towards taking all the territories of... Um, New Spain because these these places actually do look like pretty rich areas I mean look look at this there's silver mine fields gold mine fields you know plantations tobacco plantations and so forth and you know every region has a um, mine fields and so forth so I think this these areas are going to be very rich so that's my next target I might actually come towards here and um, you know even attack you know, Britain at their homeland because they're getting really annoying. Um, they've actually sent another fleet into India to attack me. And um, to tell you the truth, I don't know where that fleet is because I can't see it. But they were here last time I, s I seen them, so they could be, you know, wandering around here and, you know, getting prepared to land somewhere around my territory. first thing I'm going to do is um, actually go towards this um, re rebel army not making much here bring this guy down here just to make sure if um, the British does land anywhere around here I have something to fall back on maybe assassinate, try and assassinate their um, general update, upgrade this here might actually go for a revolution now around here so what I want to do is and um, I think I'll exempt most of my cities and just go for a very quick revolution there is advantages and um, disadvantages of having a revolution um, in the sense that if you become a republic which I'm, pr which I'm about to do because my revolution is going to be based on the fact that um, the lower class is going to rebel and one of the problem with that is going to be that when I do you know when it does become a republic 
you see here right now, I can actually choose who my ministers are. I can actually kick them and I can replace them with whoever I want. When it actually becomes a republic, I can once the elections happen, I can only kick one one minister off their post if I think they're not capable enough to um, you know hold that position. But I can only you know it'll replace or it'll auto replace that minister. But here I can choose whoever I want, and it is quite beneficial in the sense that you know um, you you know that's this guy you know Alphas Bora. Six minus uh, minus six percent recruitment cost for all land units. I might not get that with new ministers at the um, at the early stages of uh, my republic, but um, the benefit of having a republic is the fact that you know there's le less likely to have um, you're less likely to have reforms and you know revolutions and discontent in your regions, and also the technology you know the technology growth is much faster. So there is quite um, a few benefits to it. I'm gonna let. I'm not going to exempt this because I, I want the money to be extracted because they've already rebuilt so there's no point in um, getting them you know exempting them from taxes they're already exempt they're already exempt I'll just exempt this guy and exempted yep so that looks like pretty much it they've all been exempted okay not new okay Goa okay so that's pretty much all exempted still making around 5000 per turn so that's a you know that's a nice gain what I'm gonna do is end the turn you know right here Okay, I'm gonna have to actually. Um, I'm gonna fight this, and also what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna save this video, and um, I will see you guys in the next part where I'm gonna actually do this battle. So see you guys soon. Hey guys, so uh, this is the beginning of the battle. So my musketeers have actually started firing um, against the British. Uh, and I um, just want to let you guys know, I actually um, upgraded my um, video card and my um, PSU unit. What happened is I bought a new 23 inch monitor and my whole, um, you know, my old monitor, I mean my old, um, you know, GPU unit actually crashed because of the fact that it couldn't handle it, um, the resolution and so forth. So what I did is I bought a whole new um, graphics card and also a whole, um, you know, new PC, um, PSU unit as well so um, the graphics if you guys you probably guys noticed a little bit more different than before so yep okay so they're all attacking from this side which is um, that's not what I wanted I had a little surprise army here but doesn't matter what I'll do is I'll just bring them in here Okay, time to move. Okay, lost a lot of guys there. Okay, so they're gonna they're gonna push through here. They're gonna push right through here. Okay, this doesn't look good. They've got a very early breach in um, 